Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and I'm gonna be talking about Octane 2021's new compositing features in this video, specifically incorporating a background fog using the compositing features rather than trying to render a volumetric medium, uh, doing some color correction and uh, pumping up reflections and doing some stuff like that. So um, let me just set up the scene here a little bit. These are some assets from Sketchfab and Quixel in here. So credits to those authors are below in the description. It's all lit by this HDRI image here from 3D Collective. And there's my camera right there. So I like to work in Moto, but if you work in Cine 4D or some other app, um, this should all carry over. The interface will be a little bit different, obviously, but we'll be able to see what's going on. So I'm actually going to jump over to Nuke here in a second because the viewer is a little better. But let me just go over this really quickly. So Here's some lights for light mixing. Like I said, there's just a little bit of ambient uh, rendering going on. That's just a background gradient instead of an HDR. There's my main uh, uh, light that I just showed you, that HDR image mapped to a polygon. And I've got some custom AOVs here using the new custom AOV feature. There's a sea urchin. There's that uh, metal can in the foreground. There's our crab hiding there. Uh, and some corals. I've got a reflection pass I'm going to be using and a Z-depth pass, of course, for the fog. And then there it is all composited together, looking much more underwatery. Yeah, so let me jump over to Nuke. So none of this has been altered in Nuke. I'm just using the image viewer here because it has a nice little uh, wipe uh, uh, feature here. So here's right out of Octane, right? It, it kind of looks like it's out of an, it looks something in an aquarium. It doesn't really look like it's in the deep sea. And here we are with the compositing features, just Octane's compositing features and the um, output there. And so obviously uh, much more realistic and underwater looking. The things that are different here is we've pumped up the reflections of this little bottle here, or this metal canister, that's junk at the bottom. So you can see the reflections are quite a bit different. Uh, I've changed the color of this sea urchin right here. So we've altered the color using those AOVs there. Uh, I've pumped up the exposure on these uh, corals in the background to make them pop more. They were pretty faded there. Now they're popping out of the sand. And of course, we've got the, um, so a little bit of light mixing, but the big thing is the fog, right? So the environmental fog that is, you know, fading our background into nothingness and giving us that underwater look. And there's a couple more images here. So again, prior to any sort of compositing nodes in Octane, and then when you get those on, you can see the reflections being pumped up. You see the fog coming in, the change of the uh, uh, sea urchin there. And it just looks a lot more like an underwater scene versus like something out of an aquarium here. And I do a lot of aquarium exhibit work. <laughs> I can tell you that's what aquariums look like. Um, here we are again. Uh, just this is prior scene. Actually, this isn't bad because the just natural fall off of that HDR image gives a bit of an underwater look but definitely much better with um, with the compositing features being activated here. And then I, I've got a couple more I could pop by. Oh, this one's actually a good one. So again, the coral here, it looks like something in a, in a tank versus this. And here I brought in the bloom feature, the post-processing feature on these, as well as you know isolating the coral, pumping up their exposure and the compositing nodes and doing some other stuff there with the uh, fog. And you know, we've got the uh, crab here. So there the crab is kind of hidden. This is just straight out of Octane. This is this the denoised beauty pass, no compositing. When I bring on the compositing, we get the underwater fog and this color tint with the light mixing, but also the crab pops a lot more. Very hidden there, popped more because I've isolated the crab with a custom AOV, used that as a mask on the compositing features, and then pumped up its exposure with a color correction node. So there you go. I can, I've got one more crab image here maybe, or is that it? That might be it. Okay, so there we go. So let's go back to this first one because this is the uh, example I'm going to use when I put this together uh, back in Moto. All right, back here in Moto, let's get to compositing. First thing you need to do is select your render item, go over to channels, and I like to click the little filter button there and type in AOV. We need these two octane AOV channels here, and we'll drag them into the schematic just like so. I'm gonna, I usually clear that out so it doesn't uh, confuse me when I go back there and I wonder why there's only two channels showing. Okay, so there's uh, AOV is an arbitrary output variable. That's what that stands for. I think that came from RenderMan originally, that nomenclature. Um, they could probably have a better name nowadays. <laughs> render pass. It's just a you know, render pass, right? Or a buffer. Um, and we need to set those up first. So think of this uh, render passes or buffers or AOVs. Think of those as your footage for your composite. If you want anything to, you know, if you, if you, whatever you want, whatever elements you want, reflection passes, beauty passes, um, you know, or, you know mats of, of 
particular items or materials. That needs to be set up first in the render AOVs before you move up here to the output uh, AOV output group and start doing the compositing. So to start this, we need to uh, add a AOV render group right there at the top, and this is where we plug everything in. So this comes with a couple built in. It's going to come with you know uh, like a, a beauty pass built in and the denoise beauty built in. I do have denoising turned on in my um, camera imager here, so that will be available to us and I'm just going to uh, push this button here and pick a white AOV to start off. I'm going to select that and plug that in down to AOV 1 and my light ID I'm going to go ambient and then it'll show up down here once you have that plugged in. So there's my ambient. It's just a little gradient here in the environmental material. This little dark blue gradient. And so I want to do a little bit of light mixing on this scene. So I want to get my lights in here. So I'm just going to duplicate this one, drag it underneath, plug it into AOV2. And instead of ambient, I want light ID1. That is my uh, HDR image that is creating most of the light in this scene. So there's that. So I can now mix that later and tint the color and alter the intensity. If you haven't watched the light mixing uh, video yet, you may want to watch that uh, before watching this one. It's, 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 it goes over light mixing pretty exhaustively. Okay, for number three, I want my custom outputs. And so this is another Octane 2021 20, feature. You can have a custom AOV that's either from a material or an object. And here I'm just setting up my object. So if I go over here to, let's say this oil can, and I go to my Octane tab, You'll see this custom AOV drop down, and you can pick one here. I just picked number two for my oil can. I believe my sea urchin right here, which is just a, it's a, the sea urchin is actually a scan from Sketchfab, and then I've uh, replicated a bunch of spines I made on top of that, and then merged it into this object, if you're wondering why this is a procedural object. But I've got a uh, Octane custom AOV one on here. Also my three corals in the background, these three guys, all three of these guys, all of them have custom AOV4, so they're all going to be clumped together into one pass. And I think the last one, oh yeah, the crab. The crab is the last one. I think that's number three, so there's the crab. So I need to create a AOV for those, and so custom AOV right there. And I'll plug that into AOV3, so it's available to us. Custom 1, we'll just start with that, so that should be our sea urchin when I take a look at it. There it is. Now I have a map for my sea urchin, right? So I've isolated that from the scene. I can alter the colors or you know, you know do whatever with it. Um, I'm just going to control D duplicate and set up the rest of these. So plug that into four, change it to two. Let's take a look at two. There's my oil can duplicate again, plug it in, change it to three. This should be Mr. Crab. There he is. One more time. I'll get all three of my corals, which I'll have AOV four and then check it out. There it is, AOV4. So looking good. We've got a lot of passes now, a lot of uh, custom AOVs there. Now the most important one is depth, right? Because that's going to create our fog effect, which is going to render much faster, real time really, uh, versus you know creating a big uh, medium, environmental medium, and trying to you know pass rays through that and get fog that way. So this um, down here, let's see, where's our Z depth? Just scan down, Z depth AOV, that's what we want. This will actually be, I think this will be one of the most common uses of, of this compositing actually, is just doing fog with the Z depth trick instead of having to jump out to After Effects or Nuke or something. So let's take a look at Z depth. There it is, right? Closest to the camera is black, farthest away is white. And you can adjust the depths here. So if I, if I put this to like 10 or something, you can see where my geometry ends, right? And that's the environment back there. I actually don't want that harsh line. I want them to be, I really want the edge of my, uh, the farthest geometry to be white, the same as the environment. So if I just go back down to like, you know, four is probably too much, but five is really blending in pretty good there. I can also bring my environmental depth back and, and just set it to the same amount and get my uh, uh, particles back here. So the last one we want is a reflection pass. So one more and whoops, one more. I believe it's up here. Reflection AOV. And so this will just be all the reflections in the scene. Plug that in. You'll see it right here. And so, you know, the ground is fairly reflective. There's a sheen on it. And so you see this muddy ground has some reflections, really rough. 
And then you've got some sort of metallic reflections on this uh, old oil can here. And that's about it. There's not a lot of reflections on the rest of this stuff. I mean, it's, it's there, but it's pretty dim. And we're going to use this mat to isolate those reflections and pump them up in compositing. It's another thing a lot of people do in compositing is just pumping up your, your metallic reflections. So get a little more contrast on those. Okay, so our footage is, is ready to go. So you know, our footage, so to speak, is imported. So let's set up our compositing. And so similar to the render AOV group, we need an AOV output group first. So under our new compositor nodes here, not a lot of nodes yet. I hope to see uh, many more nodes in the future. Pretty limited to what you can do now, but it's still pretty effective. Uh, okay, so we set that up first, and then we set up a composite AOV output. Now, the best way to think of this is, and again, if you watch the lighting video, this one right here, think of it as your projects, right? So yeah, you can have up to you know eight different projects here in this particular AOV group, and like a like an After Effects project or a Nuke project, and then this one would be like an After Effects or a Nuke composition within that project with layers in that composition. That's the best way to think about it. And for the very bottom layer, we want our denoised beauty pass. So composite AOV output layer. By the way, if you select this, it'll just uh, it'll ghost everything that doesn't work with it. So that's if you're if you get confused, select the channel that you want to connect something to, and if it, it's not connectable, it will be it will be ghosted. So we need an output layer. So here we've got our comp, and now we've got a layer. And our layer has layer type things on it, right? We've got um, a mask for it. We've got opacity. We've got blending modes, and you know it behaves like a layer in Photoshop or After Effects or or you know a node in Nuke. Okay, let's take a look at this one. So we've got our beauty pass as our base layer, and I'm actually gonna change that to denoised beauty since we have denoising active. And if I look at this output AOV now, it looks just like our denoised beauty pass because we haven't done anything to it yet. We're gonna start layering stuff up on this now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to start bringing in all the things I wanna change, right? I've got all these custom um, outputs, so I wanna you know, alter the color on this anemone. I wanna pump up the brightness on this crab or the exposure pump up the exposure on these corals back here and pump up the um, reflectivity on this jug. And then of course, on top of everything, we're gonna put this, last thing we'll do is put the fog in. So let's just get started here. I'm going to go to layer two and add another group here. Now here's where I think it could use a little better interface. So again, it defaults to the beauty channel. We need to pick one here and instead of just showing us the uh, render passes or the AOVs that we've set up, it shows us everything. So if I do something like go to an info normal, we never set that up down here, so it's not gonna show. And so it's a little little bit confusing, where if I change this to info Z depth, we've set that up so it's gonna show, right? So that is layer two. And so I can, for instance, disable it. There's the beauty pass underneath, turn it back on. I can change the opacity, say 0.25, knock it down. You can kind of see how that fog effect is going to work when we get it in there. I can change this to like an additive mode. So, you know, it's working like you would expect, you know, classic compositing uh, application to work. Um, this particular one I am not going to do yet, this, this uh, Z-depth. This is going to be the last thing we do. So right now we're working on the, um, the urchin. So we're actually just going to go back to our Denoise Beauty and then we're going to use our mask here to isolate the urchin. So I'm going to control D duplicate my passes here. And so I've got the beauty feeding into the input and I'm going to pick my custom AOV one, which is the urchin, right? Custom AOV one, which is the urchin. That's going to be our mask. So go back over to the output and I'm going to plug this into mask. And now again, it might seem a little bit confusing. If you look at this node, it, it expects, it, it, we have an input to the mask here, but it's saying the mask is looking for the alpha. Well, there's no alpha on this output. It's just RGB all set to one. So I'm coming over here. I'm actually gonna change this. I can change this to RG or B. Doesn't matter. This has all three of those channels and they're all 100%. So now that that's set up, if I come over here and then I turn off my base layer, I'll see that's isolated, right? So again, let me just, turn this off, turn back on my base. There's my base group. And then I turn back on my uh, urchin on top of that. You don't see it because because it's just, we haven't done anything to it yet, but it's, it's there. So we're using that mask to mask the beauty pass and isolate this urchin. I know I'm being a little redundant here, but I just wanna make sure everybody gets that. 
Now we're going to add a color correction node. So I'm going to actually select the node and add a color correction AOV output here. And I'll just put it in between. And now when I make this change, in fact, I'll even just do a little isolate or uh, render selection, render region here so you can render this a little bit quicker. Again, it's, it's rendering while we're doing this, which is so, that's the part that I think is so cool. Um, okay, so we're going to just make it a little different than this one. So I'm going to shift the hue over. Say if I say 0.5, it's quite a bit. So, you know, the yellows are going green. I don't quite want it there, but I want, to, I want you to see the difference so you see what's going on. In fact, I'll even zoom in a little bit here maybe. Whoops. Zooming in on a Wake, Wacom wheel is not the best, but you can kind of see what's going on there. Okay, and then uh, so point maybe 0.25 for the hue. And so it's a little bit different. Maybe 0.33. So a little bit green, you know, different than this one over here. And then we're going to maybe bump up the exposure, like 0.25, make it a little bit brighter, like, like so. Okay, and just push back out, whoops, push back out to 100%. And you can see quite a bit different, right? Now we've got two different kinds of urchins. We only had to set up one material. It would have been a bigger pain to probably to make these material changes and having to do complete re-renders rather than just, you know, creating a mask for it and altering the colors uh, in the compositing section here. All right, so looking good. Let's just, uh, I'm just gonna duplicate this whole bunch of nodes here. We're gonna do the same thing to our crab. So let's include our crab here. I'm gonna duplicate all of these. I'm gonna move this up. And I'm gonna put, put this in layer three and then the one change i'm going to do is our mask instead of being aov1 i'm going to go to aov3 which is our crab and if i disable these other two it'll have my crab right here right so let's start adjusting the crab um i don't want the crab's hue this you this color correction that i duplicated so I, I don't want the hue to change but i do want the uh exposure to be up quite a bit like two no maybe not two maybe like 1.5 i want that crab be pretty bright. I'm pretty sure a lot of these, uh, the some of the deep sea crabs, maybe in their carapace, have some um, have some pigments that really reflect light uh, really brightly. You ever see those uh, deep sea footage of them? The white crabs just pop like crazy. Uh, okay, so there's a crab, and then we do the same thing for our corals in the background. So again, I'm just going to duplicate this whole bunch of nodes here and plug it in to layer four. Right, yeah, layer four. And I'm gonna change our mask from the crabs, which is three, to the uh, coral, which is four. Now those you know, pick up that um, increase in the uh, exposure there. And I will just leave it there, 1.5, maybe 1.75 or so. I like those popping as well. And especially when we get the fog in, that's really gonna look good with those being white. And before I do the fog, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to increase the reflectivity of this um, this metal container here. I'm just like, so I'll just do a region over half of it so you can see the difference. And so the first thing I'll do is, again, I think I'll just duplicate this whole... Actually, let's just do this one from scratch. So uh, I'll select layer 5. I'm going to add a new composite output layer. And I'm going to move no Moto's chunky nodes up. Moto's schematic, powerful yet chunky. Okay, so this guy, I want it to be uh, not a beauty pass, but I want it to be that reflection pass. So beauty reflection right here, beauty services reflection. And there you can you can see it. You know, the reason everything changed is it's just, it's the top layer now. So it's just, on you know, it's just covering up everything. And what I want to do is mask it, so I just, I'm just looking at the reflections um, on this guy right here. So again, I'm going to duplicate this render output node, and instead of reflections, I'm going to change it to uh, the custom, I believe it was number two, custom AOV2, which is, I can always check right here, right? Yep, that's my jug or my container, and I'm going to use that to mask my reflection output. Now remember, the mask defaults to looking for an alpha, and we're feeding it RGB. So we want to pick uh, like the red channel, which again is fully white. And now I'm masking that on top there. And I actually want to change my blend mode to additive. And it's really going to pop there, right? So it's really going to, if I come back here to my beauty pass, see how dull it is. And I come back here to uh, my AOV. It's, you know, I'm adding it, sort of adding that reflection pass on top of itself again. And I can even go in here and do a little more 
with the color correction uh, node here. So color correction node, um, it's getting the job done here in 2021, but I really hope that we get more nodes here and sort of, you know, just <laughs> more stuff, right? Because, you know, th there's some controls here, but again, it's pretty basic to what you would do in something like Nuke or After Effects or even Photoshop. I'd like to see some curves, a bunch of, I'd like to see a bunch of stuff, color balance, but we'll just, you know, make do with what we have now. I'm actually gonna um, increase the contrast here quite a bit uh, for these guys and then bump up the exposure. Not that much, maybe like a three and uh, maybe a 1.5 and then maybe two here. So yeah, so, you know, popping up that uh, metal here being hit by that uh, bright light on the underwater vehicle, the AUV. We have AUV, Autonomous Underwater Vehicle and AOV, the Arbitrary Output Variables. So there we go, AOVs and AOUVs. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We just need to do our fog, which is the most important one. So that will be on top of everything, layer six, and we need our new layer there. So click that, and I'm gonna drag this all the way up to the top. And we're gonna do this one a little bit differently. So if I, whoops, don't auto save on me, Moto. So again, right now it defaults to beauty. If I change this to info right here, the info's Z-depth, that's what we have. Now there's a couple of things here. So there's our Z-depth that's just plastered on top of everything. So we're seeing that. I'm actually gonna clear out my uh, render region here by right-clicking in the UI. That's another thing if you use Octane for Moto, you left-click to draw it, but to erase it, you can't just drop the tool. You actually right-click to get rid of it. And then you could drop it. Okay, so there's a couple of things here. If I look at this, and I compare it to my Z-Depth um, pass, which is down here, our footage, so to speak, our AOV there. Quite a bit of difference, right? That's a lot brighter than this. And one of the problems here is that this is set up to use the imager. And of course the imager has, a, you know, that uh, if I look at our imager here on my camera, we've got a res our sRGB response curve. So the gamma is being pushed up to 2.2, right? That gamma curve that you see to bring, bring those midtones up. And I would like to disable the imager and not see that happening in my output variable, enabled, disabled, not doing anything. So that might be a bug because if I look down here and if I disable the imager, then it works. But I don't want to disable the imager on everything in the damn composite. I just want to disable the imager on my footage, so to speak, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. That's okay because we can, we have some more nodes here to fix that, but I just wanted to point that out. And we're also not gonna be using this as the input. We're gonna be using this as the mask. So let me pull that out. The input is actually just gonna use a color. So we can, we can use an image if we wanna go into Photoshop and just create our own fog gradient, we can do that. But I'm just gonna use a color. So I need a color AOV. So that's plugged in, defaults to white. I'm gonna pick something extremely close to black, really down in the bottom of the ocean, it's almost black. We'll just make it uh, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.1, a little less red, maybe 0 0.08, since we lose the red wavelength down there. And that's probably too bright, but I'll just do that. You know, actually, I'm going to go, yeah, that's fine. We'll just do that for now. Actually, I'll probably take it down from there. But And then, so that's covering up everything. And we want to use our Z-Depth as our mask. So again, I'm going to plug this into the mask. I'm going to change the mask to... Uh, from alpha to red, and now you see it right there. So we've got, now it's suddenly looking much more underwater. Like I said, I think I'm gonna make this darker though. Just hold shift and drag to the left, make it darker, looking pretty good. This is way deep in the ocean, so it's almost black. Um, and now we can do something else here. We do have one more node that is usable here, a map range. So select the noodle to put that in between. And here we can adjust our range for our fog. And so if we adjust the input, let's say I put that at 0.5, um, we're clearing out everything up front. So what I've basically done is said, everything at 0.5 of this range and below is, is gonna be white. So we're not gonna get any fog up front. That's not really what I want, maybe, maybe 0.1, but I do want some fog up front. And then the maximum, if I turn that to 0.7, you're gonna see that coming in from the distance. That means from 0.7 to 10, uh, or one is all going to be black now. So we're going to see that as, so that it's going to pull that fog, this color further forwards. So we use these mapping ranges to kind of say where the fog is going to be. So boom, like that, we're really losing everything there. So maybe like 
Like seven five. I want to get a little bit of my. I have some rocks back there, but I'll probably lose them. Lose them all. I can kind of see it there. And YouTube, you'll probably lose it. So I'm just gonna <laughs> point eight or so. But you get the idea. You can use this map range node to adjust your fog, right? So looking uh, looking pretty good there. I think I'm gonna pump up my um, exposure on those corals just a little bit because I want them a little bit brighter. Maybe 2.5 like that. I really like those popping there. Not really, it's not quite realistic, but maybe 2.1, but I do like them sort of reflecting the light from the AUV. All right, let's do a little light mixing and wrap this thing up. So down here at my very base layer, let's turn it off here. So my base beauty layer, I'm using uh, the denoised beauty pass and I actually wanna do a light mix here. So I'm actually gonna Unplug that and delete that node and select the input and create a new light mixer. It all goes black because nothing is enabled in the light mixer by default. So let me just get this set up real quick. So I wanna, whoops, I wanna turn on my, click the node here. I wanna turn on my ambient light as I've got that output going and there's my blue, right? My ambient light output right there. So I'm gonna mix that in. And then I'm also gonna mix in my Light ID 1, which is the bright uh, HDR image there. So this should look just like the Denoise Beauty, but I'm gonna go in here and change this a bit. I'm gonna bump up my ambient white. Maybe if I bump it up to like 10, you'll see I'm bringing in a lot of blue, but I don't want it that high, maybe just two. So I'm just getting a little more of that blue in there. And then I'm going to tint my main HDR light here, my Light ID 1. Now, you're probably aware of this, but Red wavelengths don't do well in water. They dissipate really quickly. So um, so we're pretty deep deep underwater here. There's very little red. So we want to move away from red here and go to the left. And it's going to tint it this sort of greenish cyan-y color here. And it, it's really not blue. If you look at deep water footage from uh, autonomous vehicles, it's, it's really this sort of color. And in fact, it explains a lot of the reason a lot of the animals down there are red, like a lot of the cephalopods and uh, shrimp and fish and things like that down there, a deep red color, because they're basically invisible, even with bioluminescence. There's just, red light just doesn't do well at that depth or in water in general. So we're gonna just drag that to the left a little bit. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is we're just changing this base layer. We're still using, if I turn this off, uh, we're still using the Denoise Beauty Pass for all this other stuff. Actually, not this one. That's just the reflection uh, pass added on. But these guys, uh, we need to replace that Denoise Beauty with this Light Mix Pass. So we just turn this back on. If, if I look at my coral here, I don't need this anymore. But if I look at my coral here, that's this guy right here. This Denoise Beauty is my coral. I need to replace that with this Light Mixer. So I'm going to actually plug that into the input and you'll see that coral change color a bit when I plug it in. See now they're picking up that cyan color, that tinting. Whoops, don't you auto save on me, Moto. Um, and we just need to do that for a couple of these. We need to do it for the crab as well. So goodbye to noise beauty with crab, replace it with light mixing crab and he'll pick up the tint, get rid of that. And then we need to feed our denoise beauty also into this um, anemone right there. So this guy right here. And that'll pick up the tent. Whoops, that's not correct. We want to do, this is our anemone, right? So we want to feed it into, yeah, we want to feed it into the input of the color correction node. There we go. And then delete this guy, remove the node. And that's it. I don't think we have to do it to this one because it's just our reflections and we could actually, but it's pretty close to the camera. So I, th I think it's fine. Um, and that's our composite. And so pretty big difference between that, looks like a, a fish tank in somebody's bedroom, and this, which really looks like the deep sea there. So there's a quick look at compositing in Octane uh, 2021. I do think this Z-Depth uh, as a mask for a color image trick to bring in fog is gonna be a pretty uh, common usage of this. Again, I'd like to see more nodes. For instance, instead of just tinting everything the cyan color in the light mixer, it'd be nice to have a color balance node that you can reduce the amount of red in the image based on the depth mat as a mask, right? So you're reducing the red the farther you get from the camera. Instead of just tinting everything sort of a, with a reduced red in it, it would be even more realistic. So there's a lot more we can do once we get more nodes here. And I also think, um, you know, the interface could probably be a little less clunky, 
but uh, just the idea that we set up all these, you know, all this compositing while it's rendering, you know, we just kind of have to wait a couple minutes till it's done and then we can save them all out at once is pretty cool. Definitely pretty cool. Oh, also, if you're using this, you can just um, go to uh, multi layer here, if you, or multi layer discrete files. If you want to say a ping, it'll save out a ping for e each one of these guys here. Or you can also go here and change this to an EXR and, and go to like a multi-layer and save out a multi-layer EXR. So those are some options there for saving your image. All right, so I think we can wrap it up. I think there'll be a lot more Octane 2021 videos on Pixel Fondue. Also, any update to Sculptron. Hopefully we'll get a new one uh, pretty soon here. I'll put on here. And I'd like to get some EmberGen videos up as soon as I figure out how to use it. Yum, yum.